The following podcast is a next level production. We're getting tons of missing person complaints in a three block radius. I'm thinking hysteria. What are they up to? Who? The Umbrella Academy. Use your head, number two. First Marcus, now they're grabbing civilians off the streets. Number two. I suppose that means you're number one now. Marcus is missing. I'm taking the reins. <laughs> what? You think it should be you? You had your chance once. Didn't turn out too well now, did it? Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about the Umbrella Academy Season 3, Episode 3. And this week we're going to focus, obviously, on Episode 3, which was entitled Pocket Full of Lightning. So, uh, Steve, do you want to give us the synopsis of this particular episode? Sure. As people start disappearing in waves, Five and Lila reluctantly team up to solve their time travel problem, and Klaus has a sees a new... Klaus... It must it must be a word. I just I copied it directly out of IMDB, but that's crazy. Klaus sees a new side of his father, so okay. yeah. Well, that is true. We we do. We do, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it was it was fun to see that too, because uh how often do we get to see a different version of Reginald Hargreaves? Mm-hmm. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the, it, it's kind of brief as far as the synopsis goes. There's a lot more involved with this particular episode mm-hmm. than just Five and Lila teaming up. Uh, there's a lot more chance encounters. We do see somebody else at the very end that gets involved, who we've seen from last season. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got uh, Diego working with uh, with both Lila and Five. At, yeah. at a certain point as well. And then Luther finds out about uh, Victor. And yes. Uh, and uh, we get a, a little cute scene with them about that. Yeah. So uh, th- there's a lot more involved in what we get in this particular synopsis of the episode, but I really did enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. With that, we should move into initial thoughts. So what were your thoughts? I mean, it, it's a it's a great it, it picks up almost you know right where we left off with explaining the grandfather paradox, which I think is super cool. I, I love that <laughs> that, and I'll talk a little bit more about that and, and when we get into discussion points. But yeah, I I liked it. It was um, I mean, uh, it's it's one of those things that a lot happened, and it's it's kind of mo- it's moving the the story forward. But there's a lot of things that we're going to pick up in the next episode. You know, like a lot of things we're going to find out that are going to explain. What happened in this episode yeah. that, you know, that will get further fleshed out. Yeah. My overall thoughts, I had a good time watching it for the first time. Well, first few times, actually, because I'd yeah. seen it a long time ago. But when I watched it again, uh, I, it brought up the, the the memories of the actual episode itself and the funniness of it. Because we had those specific uh, moments within it. And like I said, Luther is one of them mm-hmm. because he leaves Sloan's bedroom and he's he's got that little pep in his step. Mm-hmm. And he goes, uh, can I have some of those? And then, of course, we get the wave <laughs> of everything, like uh, at the, uh, what would you call it? like the newspaper guy? The, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the name of those guys are. I mean, you're from New Jersey, you, New York area. Is there, is it just street vendor or uh, what's Usually the... it's like a street vendor that they have like yeah. newspapers, magazines, your, your candy, cigarettes, and all that stuff. Uh, mm. They're like, it's like a news booth or something. Yeah. And he's like, and I'll have those. Condoms. Yes, for sex. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he kind of misses what's going on around him with the wave and mm-hmm. a lot of people missing at that point too. Yeah. And so we see a lot of this uh, wave of power that's going around them that, that's wiping things away. We've mentioned it in the last episode too, which is pretty interesting too, because we get more of mm-hmm. this and it's going to be something that continues on within the uh, season itself which we do get answers for but <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> we, later. we don't want to get too far into that but we do get answers for that mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, and this is actually one of my discussion points a little bit of it, so I don't want to go too deep into into the this this scene, but this is yeah, it's a great scene. And with that, we'll we'll go right into highlight like our highlighted points or top fives or points that we find of like most interest. So you can go ahead and start this week. I think I started last week, so sure. Well, we well you already spoke about it. The whole Elmore and time traveling and how the grandfather paradox happened. So it's like it's kind of like a whole leave it to beaver kind of setup if you think about it and how five narrates it about how the commission explains a grandfather paradox (laughs) yeah i love that they have a whole volume about paradoxes this is just one paradox they have a whole volume of of you know to explain paradoxes paradoxes paradox i yeah i think they said paradoxes (laughs) i think is what they said so yeah but I just loved it and completely and how they were able to portray it. And it's kind of like one of those things, like when you were sat down in the, in school of like, you shouldn't do this because this will happen. Right. And then it's like, a, and it's all pretty much played out kind of like a, uh, a mini movie. And it's yeah, like a play because at the end, when the curtain is closed, we see the logos of the Sparrow Academy and the Umbrella Academy yep. on it. So it's, it's almost like a play. And I, I just, yeah, it, it was, it was really, really cool. I love that whole dramatization of it. And I'll, I will admit the first time it faked me out, I was like, did this really happen? And then at the end of course, five says, well, but it's, this is, a, this is a, whatever, this is a fiction. This never actually happened because if it actually happened, the whole universe would break. So yeah, exactly, yeah. So if they did get true images, <laughs> the universe are already broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, next one. One of mine. Yeah, just going leapfrogging about what you were talking about first about you know Luther leaving leaving Sloan after having sex, and he's you know he's walking and they're playing the song. Uh, Do you believe in magic? Which I don't remember. That's not the same song that was after he and Allison had sex. Was it a different song? I don't remember. Um, yeah, it was, it was definitely a different song. Um, but I <laughs> have to admit, I watched this today to, to do my notes, and every other time I've watched it, I totally miss the bum vomiting yep. when he's walking past, and then he's like, "Have a good night," and, then, and the, <laughs> the couple is just kind of looking at him like this bum has just vomited all over the sidewalk, you know. But I just love in his goofiness with the street vendor that I mean, we know he's had sex before, but it's just, it just, I, I just love Luther's. It's just it, that goofiness about him that he's, and of course, like you already mentioned, when the wave, when the wave hits, he like takes a beat and he looks around and he like, he knows something weird has happened, but then he's like, well, okay. And he just grabs the condoms and grabs the gum and, and starts and, and runs He just off. runs away. He steals and, everything because the guy yeah. is gone. <laughs> yeah. And then the song starts back up again. And I, I love that later we see him making a mixtape for Sloan and Diego's giving him crap about it. You're making a mixtape. And Lionel Richie, really? And like dancing on the ceiling. Oh, that's going in. That's definitely going in. It's just, I, I just love this. Just Luther throughout this whole episode, his, his puppy dogness and his goofiness. And then especially like there at the end, in when she's trying to mouth at him to run because she knows her family wants to kill all of them and he's like oh and he just says out loud oh run you know <laughs> it's just, it's just I, I just and i love what we're gonna get with this relationship that we're gonna see uh it's a much different relationship than what we saw between him and allison in the first season you yes. know, and and so the the reaction to it is different. It's it's really it's just good. And I I love that. Uh, um, oh, the actor's name has escaped me. Tom, whatever, is uh, is just having fun with with this character right now. Yeah, he he's definitely having fun with the character, and I think it happens even for the rest of the the season too. Mm-hmm. He takes it a little lighter in comparison that we had Luther before. He was always so serious, but still aloof. You know, mm-hmm. in, in my opinion. But I, I think the character became more of a, a joke unto itself at certain mm-hmm. points. But there are still some serious aspects to it. Yeah. But, you know, they p- kind of play on that, which is good, too, because you can't have the same character at the same time all the time. And we do get differences in certain characters. Like, look at Allison. Her mm-hmm. her attitude and her character has changed drastically in comparison to the last two seasons. Mm-hmm. Like, l- look at... Uh, when Allison and Victor approach number two and number three, mm-hmm. well, in this case, number one and number two, because Ben right. 
from the sparrows decides i'm the new number one and you're the new number two yeah and yeah. they they're talking about the exchange for marcus but <clears throat> there is no marcus <laughs> right and right they don't want to state that they don't want to go into that and uh but allison's coming off all very hostile yeah and, and, yeah and, really and, hostile she's like we'll send it back to you in pieces yeah and, you know yeah and victor's like she, trying to stop her <laughs> yeah yeah so I love this 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 switch. We see her drinking more, obviously, and, and we're going to see her drink more and more throughout the 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 season. And of course, she does this this turn to the dark side. You know, yeah. Victor talks about when did you develop this hair trigger and all that, and she's like, "You used to be the soft spoken one or the 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 level headed one, something like that." And yeah, and she's like, "Well, that never worked for me." So yeah, yeah, and everybody's Allison's changing character. their directive in the course of their character within this particular season. And it's kind of strange, but it's kind of fun for the fact mm -hmm. that, like, we see that with Luther, we see that with Allison. Definitely uh, Victor, who was formerly Vanya. Mm -hmm. uh, Klaus is typical Klaus, in my opinion. And the best is uh, the the relationship that Five has with Lila, too. And that, that was my favorite part of this, because he has to go in and talk to Lila. And he goes, oh, I need to have somebody that I can actually talk to. Right. And he doesn't want to because he hates her and they both hate each other. And then she's taking a bath and then it erupts into this kind of quick kind of fight. But the fact is, you see Diego walking down the hall. We're trying to get to Lila's. He goes, wait, you just both came out of the bathroom and she was in the bath. What were you guys doing in there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's... if I would have anything to yeah, do with Lila exactly. that way. <laughs> Yeah, and I love that exchange between Five and, and, and Lila there in the hallway before they leave. And by the way, at what point did she get dressed? She got dressed at some point, you know? Yeah, it kind of just happened. But, <laughs> but I love that exchange where, where he says, he says, you know, the handler, she's talking about how they shot her mother, the handler. And he's like, yeah, who had just killed you. And then I went back in time and brought you back. And then he says, oh, and by the way, the handler never loved you. But Diego, he might actually love you. Yeah. No, and then and, he just and walks away. You can away. see it in her face though. She's like, huh? Yeah. It, it was one of those, it's like it was one of those awakening things for her because for the longest time, in the very beginning, she was like, I'm hating on Diego. Mm -hmm. Now I think it kind of sparked something of like, oh, okay, we have this. We do have yeah. this. So and then on top of that, you have to do they have to deal with the, the son, quote unquote son. Stanley. Right. Stanley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, there, there was a, a cool point within the, uh, the episode that I do like, and that was when you do see it with Ben and I'm forgetting the girl with the crows, but the, the Faye. 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 Okay. So mm -hmm. Faye and Ben, they're having the conversation about how he's taking over, mm -hmm. but mom shows up and they do see how strange mom is, you know, the, the robot is acting. Around. Yeah, I had this. So I have this in my in, in my in my point. So I, I can I can kind of expound on this here. That whole scene starts with Ben. And it's so it's almost a throwaway line, but it just shows how um, unobservant and un I don't want to say unintelligent, but how he's just his his thinking is in the wrong direction because his first initial thought is, oh, the Umbrella Academy is kidnapping people off the streets now when they're hearing the, <laughs> the news words of people disappearing. I'm like, what? Yeah. Why would they be kidnapping just random people off the streets and where would they be putting them? But OK, man, that's that's your thought. Um, and then, of course, you know, Faye is becomes the number two role. But then Grace tells them straight up that Marcus you know, was taken by God, and that's in in air quotes. I'm I'm using there. Yeah. But I love if they don't believe her initially, and then it's not until towards the end of the almost halfway through the episode or three quarters way through the episode where they they actually go down to the basement to try to find the briefcase, and they see the ball of fire, and they see her kneeling there. In praying and speaking in tongues yep. to this to this ball and that's when they realize oh okay she was telling the truth marcus is gone so yeah yeah and and thankfully that kind of should end the feud between the umbrella and the sparrows <laughs> you would think but the exact opposite happened <laughs> exactly. unfortunately yeah yeah it's like you guys created this so we're against you even more so now yeah, exactly. Because they ask her, you know, when did it appear? And she says that two days ago, the same time that our new visitors appear. And so they they realize that, okay, this has something. They don't know exactly what, but they know, okay, this has something to do with the Umbrella Academy. And so that just sets them off. 
Eh, well, they should always look at the person that's in charge or who they've been trying to like drug at this point, which would be Reginald, and which leads me to my other point that I really liked, Klaus and Reggie. That was a great. That was a great s- series of seeds too. Yeah, go ahead. The the fact that you know it's like for Klaus to get in, he gets this whole like uh, wetsuit and yeah. snorkel stuff to go into what looks like the sewer. <laughs> he goes, mm-hmm. "Oh, I've had worse." <laughs> and he goes in, and he sneaks into the Sparrow Academy house and is able to get into Reginald's. Uh, but he he was just like, "Wait, you're not the dad that I know." He's yeah. starting to realize Klaus gets that whole feeling. It's like, of course, you know, Reginald's like, well, you want some ice cream? I could get you some ice cream. Let's have some ice cream. And it's yeah. like, and then they're there cuddled up on the couch yeah. watching TJ Hooker and having ice cream. Yeah. And you can see Klaus is like, wow, this is a thing I never had with my dad. This is not my dad, but you are my dad. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's interesting that, you know, the whole, that, that, whole, this whole storyline is going to progress because he teaches him how to hide, how to not take the pills. Yes. You know, and, and that's going to pay off at the end, actually in a bad way for Klaus, because this is the father that he always wanted. This, uh, even though he's a drugged up, you know, soft, soft headed, kind of father but what's going to happen by the end of the season when he when he weans himself off the drugs is he's going to turn back into that a-hole that he was in this in season one and that we saw in there in season two when they met him in 63 yeah. so it's it's really it's really almost a a, a bad thing for klaus but it, it, so he he's going to lose well, that father benefit figure. klaus so, later on too as he do, we do see it's him developing his powers that reggie helps out if we remember later on yeah, but that's in the i don't think that's oh is that with this guy yeah i can't remember is that because this guy but the, but but you realize also the ulterior again we're getting into spoilers folks if you watch the whole yeah. hopefully you've watched the whole season but really all reggie all reginald hargreaves undrugged is doing is letting him enhance his power so he can use him Oh yeah, he does. You yeah. know, so really, it, yes, it does benefit Klaus, but at the same time, it doesn't because <laughs> he ends up getting thrown into, you know, he ends up getting thrown into the the dead zone because mm-hmm. of it. Because you know, Reginald's, like, well, I don't need you anymore, and uh, but that's that's several episodes down the road. So exactly, but, but, but yeah, you're right. I hadn't thought about it that way, but yeah, it does kind of benefit Klaus a little bit. But yeah, because he does come through at the very end too with his mm-hmm. abilities. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, another point that I like to bring up too, but this is the very end. We do lose two of the Sparrow people mm-hmm. when Harlan comes out because we do see Harlan check in and he puts himself down as Lester. In yeah, the hotel. and I had I had totally forgot about this until I listened to TV podcast industries because of course they're doing an episode by they're 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 much Way faster ahead. and they're they're ahead of us. But I listened to their episode two. I think it was their episode one and their episode two recap, mm-hmm. and I realized that in the season he hasn't. It's not until this episode that he's revealed as Harlan. So they're calling him Lester. Yes. In the first two episodes. And I remember listening to their podcast going, no, it's his name's not Lester. That's Harlan. Because I forgot that he hadn't been, it hadn't been revealed yet that he's Harlan. Yeah. So, so I, I realized that when I watched this episode, I was like, oh, that's right. We don't know that he's Harlan yet. So. Yeah. The, the whole int- reintroduction to Harlan as it is, but mm-hmm. he's older now. We know this. We know who he is. He does show up at that whole standoff in the Verbi at, at the front lobby the of the hotel. Mm-hmm. With uh, the sparrows and the Umbrella Academy, yeah, and, and I, I thought that was great. When you know, there's of course Marcus is missing, so all we have is we have Ben, Faye, Alfonso, Jamie, Sloan, and then Cube, Chris Cube. Uh, that's what I'm calling him. Yeah, <laughs> Chris yeah. Cube. So we have this these six, and they're like, well, "Where's the rest of yours?" And Luther's something like, "What are you taking role or something like that?" And yeah, like, is he Luther or Diego? I think it, it probably was Diego who said, "What are you taking role?" You know, something something like that. And then, like you said, we lose Alfonso and and Jamie Harlan kills them because they don't get out of the way. Yep. Of yeah, his, Luther his, saves Sloan. Luther and, saves Sloan and, and Jamie and and uh, Ben and Francis and, are are yeah. the ones that die. 
it's yeah, terribly. Alfonso. Alfonso and Jamie oh. are the ones are the ones oh, who died. Alfonso? Oh. Yeah, it was it was Alfonso because you see his face all melt. Melt. Yeah. And and, and did. so the, the ones that escape are Ben, Faye, and Chris. Right? Yeah. Because that's the old, that no Sloan is let they leave Sloan behind. Oh yeah, with the She's, umbrellas. Yeah. 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 The three, the three of them leave and they leave Sloan there in the Umbrella Academy. So because that's gonna come into play later as well. Yeah. But the fact that, you know, you see how harsh his power is mm -hmm. in comparison. And it's at the very end, so that that you get this whole eruption and, you know, Harlan just unleashes and it does basically take out uh, Alfonso and Jamie. Yep. And then I think at this point, at the very end of the last minute, you know, Victor realizes who it is. Yeah, Victor. Victor says Harlan, and and um, now of course the I think the probably the first time I watched this when I was binging through the whole thing, it probably didn't hit me immediately that that was Sissy's son mm -hmm. until the next episode. Because in the next episode, we're going to get the whole. I believe it's the next episode we're going to get the, the whole, whole like answers of what happened right, and why of, he's of, there. Yeah, how he got to this to this point. So, um, so I probably when I first watched it in the binge, I probably didn't. When she said Harlan, it probably didn't click in my head. But of course, these subsequent rewatches, I've been like, yeah, that's Harlan. There he is. <laughs> you know, his power is very similar to Vanya. So remember, he got it from Vanya. Yes, he got his power uh, from Victor. Excuse me. Well, I guess she was Vanya when she gave him his powers. So yeah, but uh, but yeah, and, and there's that moment between Allison and Victor where he's he's like, well, we need to go get the rest of the team. And Allison's like, no, I've you're the most powerful one of us all. We don't need the rest of the team. But her power kills. Like her her power is is a destructive yes power. So it, it's just an interesting turn that we see again. It's 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 little subtle things that they're doing to show us that Allison is having this turn to the dark side. Yeah. And, and uh, so let, let's talk about more of less uh, with Victor, too. We, we already mm -hmm. talked about a little bit of Luther coming in because he hasn't seen Victor since the change. Yeah. And it's Diego who tells him, oh, it's Victor now. And and he goes, OK. And at first he just kind of rolls with it and he doesn't he, he he doesn't say anything. But then it's later when he and Diego are alone together. He's like, should we have a party or something? Should yep. we, you know, <laughs> you know? And Diego's just like, you just want to have an excuse to throw a party. Have a party. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and he's but yeah, I love that whole conversation he has with Victor where he's like, love the haircut. It frames your face. Yeah. And you can just see like it, it's one of those. It's again, one of those subtle, subtle things that Elliot Page does. That it's, it's, you can see how he is just beaming at the pride his brother is showing him. Yes. And the, the, the acceptance that his brother – and, like, I, there was a moment there where I'm kind of surprised they didn't hug. Like I really thought, I really thought Victor was going to go in for the for the hug for the hug there because it just he, he gets this smile on his face and he just starts. But yeah, it was it was really a touching moment. Yeah, that that was pretty much for all my my points, but yeah, the, uh, the, yeah, that's I'm, that's I'm, all of mine. I'm so. at the point of like just uh, a couple of notes. I don't have any quotes. Unfortunately, I think I, I splintered them in there throughout the whole time. <laughs> I've, but I've got a couple of quotes, but I have one. I have one note uh, that we haven't talked about yet within my notes, and that's that I don't. I didn't notice until this watch of the, and only I only noticed it because of having seen the rest of the season. That in Reginald's study, when they come, when they cut back to it, Klaus is looking at the painting of the white buffalo. Yes. And that's going to come into play later in the season, the white, the white buffalo. And I was like, oh, there's the foreshadowing that we were getting of the white buffalo. So, yeah, the great white buffalo. Yep. Great white buffalo. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's the only note that I have. Machine too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, the, that's the only note I have that we haven't already talked about. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I thought, uh, we, we already talked about Lila on five a little bit with the. Uh, but they had a conversation about using his power and how she mimics. And that's how they're able to work together mm -hmm. because they said they wouldn't be able to do anything with the briefcases. Cause that was the idea of getting them together in order to make one of them work. Right. So if they double the powers and she mimics his powers, they're able to do it tenfold Yeah. to make those work. Uh, and of course, you know, there it's like, you know, she starts laying in on five about shagging a mannequin and then five mm. mentioning about her adopted mother always trying to have trying to kill her yeah. or have her killed. 
you know, and then, you know, you already mentioned too about, you know, five mentioning about Diego loving her. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And then they have that moment. They have that moment where, where five is like, well, how, how are we, or uh, Lila is like, how are we going to trust each other to, to do this? Cause they they were going to have to have full trust in each other to do this, to make this whole thing work. And then five says, well, you know, mutual white hot hate is just as, is, is just as honest as trust. And she goes, Okay. And so like, it's literally their hatred for each other is what keeps them honest. And that's why they're able to do this and get to the commission Yeah, there at the end. Yeah. Uh, the, the quotes, the couple of quotes I have, mm-hmm. one is from, is from Allison and she's talking to five and she says, you know, you can't drag us through hell because you have an itch only an apocalypse can scratch and then expect us to deal with the fallout. Uh, that was great. An itch only an apocalypse can scratch. Uh, and then when Diego is talking to Stanley and Stanley says something about my, you know, mom wouldn't let me just wander the streets. She doesn't trust me. And he says, that's because she's a terrible person and I'm amazing. Remember that. <laughs> you know, and this whole thing of Diego thinking he's being a great dad because he's letting Stanley wander off and do whatever he wants. And then of course it's Stanley who's the one who kind of starts the confrontation there in the hotel because he burns the he drops the Molotov cocktail and <laughs> burns the tapestry. And that was that was a hilarious. I didn't mention that that moment when we have that showdown and the tourists are all taking pictures of them. You yep. know? <laughs> and the fact that the kid already knew how to make a pipe bomb, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little delinquent. <laughs> uh, but the funniest is too with Diego and you talk about Stanley. He tries to get rid of Stanley, but it's like, here, she, he goes, $8? Really? What am I supposed to do with $8? He goes, kid, $8 is like a month's salary for a kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he crazy goes, really? <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff. <laughs> but uh, that's all I have had so far. Uh, that's yeah, that's all I've got for this one. I didn't see any feedback. No. Same here. I, I checked email. We didn't get an email. Okay. So, uh, you know, we, we will tell you people how to submit your feedback if you choose. But uh, this this was kind of quick. But for that, well, let's go right into it. how can people submit their feedback? Well, obviously, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice, whether that be Spotify, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts. So if you can give us a review there, that's one way you can give us feedback. We'd love to get a five-star review or some kind words there. We will be notified by those reviewer systems, and we'll give you a shout-out. Exactly. You can also check us out on our website, panelspixelspodcast.com. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And when we remember to put up a post, uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we put up a post there to tell you what episode we'll be uh, reviewing that week. Exactly. We are also found on Twitter at panels, the number two pixels. So panels to pixels, the number two in the middle is panels and pixels. And we have an email address, which is panels2pixels1 at gmail.com. That's panels2pixels1. And the two is T-O, spelled out right in the middle, with the number one at gmail.com. You can find us on YouTube. All you have to do is search for panels to pixels podcast. If you're there and you like what we do there, which pretty much is the podcast on YouTube form. YouTube form. But uh, we also do interviews and we have other videos on there as well. Subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. Absolutely. We are on Instagram at Panels 2 Pixels Podcast, all spelled out in words at Panels 2 Pixels Podcast. And we highly recommend everybody else check out the Next Level Radio Online.com website for all the other podcasts that are on there Wilhelm, The Melting Pat Podcast Zero, and so much more. Coming up next will be episode four, and I don't have the title in front of me because I forgot to pull it up. Uh, okay. Episode four of season three of the Umbrella Academy will be next up at some point. We will have She-Hulk also. She-Hulk season one, episode one will be coming out as well. So you may hear that before you hear the next episode of Umbrella Academy. Correct. And where else can listeners hear us, Steve? Well, I sent voice- voicemails to our uh the various other friendly podcasts such as uh, the walking dead cast which is right now covering tales of the walking dead i send them voicemails for each of the episodes i'm trying to keep up with run for your lives which is on the adrenaline cinema podcast network and not adrenaline cinema, it's pirate radio <laughs> yep. pirate pod 
Pirate Radio podcast. Uh, Pirate Core Entertainment. Pirate Core Entertainment. Man, I'm sorry. Pirate Core Entertainment podcast network has run for your lives, and I try to to keep up with them. They just recently did a review of the Netflix series Two Minute Horror Stories, and yes. their episode was the episode was called was Fix, and I sent them a voice note for that, so you can hear me there, and you'll hear my voice pop up on various other podcasts. And as Steve had mentioned, you can find me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast and the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. There, and we cover action, adventure, suspense, thriller, all those stuff that you know make your adrenaline going. We still have like episodes to put up, so uh, just check out the uh, the actual uh, Facebook page, which would be Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So uh, go to facebook.com slash Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, or go to the Pirate Core Entertainment dot com website, and you can check that out along with all the other podcasts like Steve had already mentioned, Run For Your Lives, Watched It in the 80s, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, and as well, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Uh, you could also hear me on the Podcastica Network as we cover Sandman Cast. So that we're covering the Sandman show that is on Netflix. So uh, look out for that. We're covering this entire season. Very cool. All right. Well... That's it for our show. I know it's kind of short, but <laughs> uh, we will definitely be getting you out another episode soon, too, uh, when it comes to She-Hulk and for the Umbrella Academy. I'm sorry if these are kind of slow to come out. Life found a way, so <laughs> I've been trying to keep keep up with editing and get these out to you. So thank you for your patience. So as usual, same podcast, different panel, different pixel. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels Podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.